Now the Nintendo Switch is not comfortable. Let's just call it what it is, guys. It's not that comfortable. So you get something like this, a grip case. I don't like this grip case that much. Sorry, Tom Talk. I love everything else you make. This grip case, I do not love. But there are other ones. They're satisfied. There's a bunch of other brands. But me personally, I have talked about how I don't like grip cases because they change the design language of the Switch. And I think the Switch looks beautiful. So I opted for something along the lines of fatter Joy-Cons. And I went for something like this the split pack compact. Now I like these, not just because Gengar's on them, but because the thumbstick feels good, it's raised, the buttons are clicky, everything just feels more robust. But this is missing things. This is missing amiibo support. This is missing vibration. This is missing power. These are dead unless they're plugged into your Nintendo Switch. So then you're left with a couple things. You can switch out your Joy-Cons when you're on the go. That would require a much bigger case if you were on the go. It's a lot of problems. Well, I think I have the solution. So I was perusing Instagram one day and I saw a case that I've seen multiple times, the Switch Force Field, which is made by Genki. And if you're not familiar with Genki, they make a bunch of products. They're really great and I'm a huge fan of their stuff. But then I looked a little closer and I realized this isn't the Force Field for the Switch Lite, which was originally what this thing was designed for. It's actually for the OLED. And I thought, oh my gosh. So I did what everybody who creates videos online does is you type in the comments, I'd like to review this with hopes that they will see it. Well, lo and behold, I got a DM and an email saying, here's the tracking information. Hope you love it. And so here it is. This is the Force Field by Genki. And there are plenty of things I like about it and a couple things that I don't love about it. Let's crack into it. First and foremost, this thing is sleek AF. This thing is very sleek. And that is what I like about it the most. It is textured and slightly rubberized, which is even greater. and. It just is a nice hard case. I feel like my Switch is safe in this. Now, there are a few things that are exposed. My Joy-Cons, as you can see, the Joy-Con shoulder buttons are exposed. So if you're throwing this in a bag and it's gonna rattle around, you probably need to put it in a pocket that is a little bit tighter. Another thing that you might wanna take note is this does have the ability to allow you to pull out your back flap. Now, in doing so, when I was like, well, there's not magnetized like everything else. If I push this back and let it hang, the back flap kind of just falls back and I don't love the way that feels. Turns out the back of your Nintendo Switch isn't all metal, so it's hard to magnetize that. Those are my two biggest gripes with this case, but everything else that I'm gonna talk about, I love. First thing I absolutely love, aside from the design, and that is one of the biggest pluses, is it has these mini grips on the back. And I, as someone who's been looking for just a small extra feel in the back of the Switch, this is perfect and they are hard. And so you don't have to worry about these compressing or anything like that. It's a part of the hard shell design. Another thing that I really like about it is it has this nice force field up front and when you flip it back, you're like, well, that's gonna be kind of annoying. It's magnetized. And so you now have the whole gaming solution right here. It feels so good. And what I'm really impressed by is how it actually feels in the hands. I wasn't expecting there to be enough of a grip on the back for it to really make a difference, but it does. Now, do I wish the grip was bigger? Sure, but would that change the overall sleekness and minimalistic design? Yeah, so the trade-off is there. Now, one thing you are going to have to do if you are going to use this the hybrid way that a lot of people use their Nintendo Switch, you'd have to completely remove it from the case if you're going to dock it. It does not fit in the dock, but there are ways around that. Now it does require you to purchase more stuff, but eh, I took a poll and it looks like people do have multiple docks. This is their dock. This, this, yes, what I'm holding right now is a dock. They're Covert Dock Mini for 50 bucks or something along the lines. If you're looking for an additional dock, something that's more portable, this is the way to go. This is in my bag at all times. I actually have their other dock, their normal Covert Dock plugged in, and that's what I use as my standard dock now that I'm using this case, and I don't even have my normal Switch dock anymore. That is just packed away in the same bag. I have like my extra Joy-Cons and stuff like that. This dock is Great, now it only has HDMI and USB-C out. It doesn't have additional ethernet port or USB ports if that's something that you need. So take that into consideration. But the combination of the small, tiny covert dock, which is designed for the Nintendo Switch. This right here is absolutely designed for the Nintendo Switch, which is awesome because third-party docks can get kind of sketchy and the power delivery system in those things 
are often real, real dicey. And you know, you just gotta be careful when it comes to powering your Switch. But this right here has been designed for it. It comes with a USB-C cable already and everything that you would need to get this thing up and running with the exception of the HDMI cable. You have to provide that yourself, but chances are you already got one. And so this replaces your dock and that force field replaces your case. Now, what are you missing in the case? Well, there's no slots for your game cards. So if you have a bunch of game cards, you might have to get an extra game card case. And again, the tops of your Joy-Cons are exposed. Now, if you're going to be docking your Nintendo Switch and using the case at the same time, I'd highly recommend removing the whole front cover so that you have your vents exposed, both the bottom and the top. And that way there can be proper airflow throughout your whole Switch. If you keep the actual force field flap on, it's going to block your vents and that might not be the best best for overheating, but I have seen people online say that it doesn't really cause an issue. I just always err on the side of caution when it comes to heat management on a device like the Nintendo Switch. Those two items, these two things right here, I think are the perfect one poo punch for the minimalistic, sleek design that Nintendo Switch has always tried to achieve. I really, really do appreciate the tidiness of the design, the extremely covert nature of it. And I'm a huge fan of both these products. Now, full disclosure, I haven't paid for these, but as you can see, this isn't my dock right now. I have their other dock that I purchased for full price, $70 at the time with a bunch of their other features, their Bluetooth connection kit and all that other stuff. They only just recently decided to send me stuff. In fact, they are one of the three companies that I've always wanted to work with, one being 8-Bit Doe, which is my absolute favorite, Nintendo Switch, and I guess they do stuff for Xbox too, but they're my absolute favorite third-party accessory creators when it comes to Nintendo Switch. Two, Tom Talk. Their cases are bar none. Their bags are great, and I love Tom Talk. And now Genki, which Tom Talk, I'm sorry, your cases are great, but this force field is the sleek design that I've been looking for, baby, and I can't get enough of it. I just, I love the way it looks. The design language, I've said it before, I'll say it again, is why the Switch is so beautiful. Especially that OLED, baby. All right, if you liked it, hit the like. If you want to sub, see more Nintendo Switch stuff, hit the sub. But most of all, happy gaming.